man. Yeah, man. How is the vibe like? How is the vibe like? Vibe is nice. I can't complain. We have life, so you know what I mean? We keep pushing the music. The vibe is great, especially with Lagazi. You know, we have Lagazi across across the ocean. So, yeah, man, we give thanks, man. Definitely. We give thanks. We give thanks. We give thanks. Um, Is this your first time talking to Africa? Yes. All right. All right. Then, then the whole African, you know, continent welcome Capital D into our space. Easy. Thank you. Same thing. Yes, Africa. <laughs> love, yeah. love, 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 love. Yeah, man. So, um, I know Capital D has been around for a minute. I would like to find out from you. You know, I ask, you know, every artist I talk to on this network the same question that, you know, COVID hit us really bad and wild, you know, around the COVID time, how was life, life like for you and the I family? Well, everybody a mask up, you know how that got, that goes already. But um, I mean, musically, we kept it going because I have my recording studio. So I never had to worry about like doing shows or anything like that. So I'm just, I just kept recording. I have my, 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 my own, you know, recording studio. So I'm just record and record and record. Cause I use any free time that I'm available, you know, that I'm available to, to record. Just, I, I record music and we we'll have the internet. The greatest thing is we still have the internet and, and you can see what's going on across the world. And, you know, everybody was zooming, everybody's doing these live Facebooks or live Instagram. So music was still going, you know, it wasn't really slowing. It wasn't slowing me down. I mean, a lot of the songs that actually, I think, were that were being done on the album was during COVID. Yeah, so I mean, we we just kept it, we kept it moving regardless. I mean, COVID is not something; it might physically stop some some people, but mentally, it didn't stop us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and at the same time, we want to say, um, we want to send our condolences to anybody that if if you lost anybody during COVID, we send our condolences, and you know, because it was a hard time for certain people. Some people took it a lot worse than others, you know? All right. All right. So it means that the COVID time, COVID didn't stop, you know, Capital D to do whatever Capital D had to do. But you, you had your own recording studio and you utilize it, you know, at the COVID time. You know what I mean? That was yeah. the lockdown. I, I think the lockdown really helped a lot of people because families were not really together. You wake up, you go to work sometimes. You meet your, your wife and kids maybe once every week or twice every week. So the COVID time really kind of brought a lot of families together and all that. Yeah, man, we give thanks. So moving yeah, forward. If, if, COVID, if COVID was a sound, it never locked me off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. this, man. I like this. <laughs> so moving forward now, in terms of talking about Capital D, you know, in terms of how you started. You know, um, how was it like? I know, I know you were born in Manhattan. You know, yeah. uh, how was it like growing up with your parents? Well, my parents were very much in the church, especially my mother. Um, actually, if I can, rec when I recall my my childhood, um, my my parents would take me to church. I think the first time I actually sang in front of anyone was in church. Wow! And the the, the, the funny thing about it was. I did something where I took a church song and I flipped it. <laughs> wow. I took the same melody and I put my own lyrics. And then my mother and, the, and, and the, you know, the people at the church said, sing it, sing it in front of people. They gave me a microphone. And I, that was, I think, the first time I actually sang it in front of people. And I got a good reception and it was, it was, it was great, you know. So we give thanks for that. So um, my, my childhood was, I had a great childhood. I'm an only child. Wow. Um, never had any siblings. Um very very much loved by my parents um they my father actually bought my first set of turntables wow so he 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 kind of i don't want he, he he embraced what i was doing you know yeah wow so 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 um your father bought your first you know set of turntables so it means yeah. that capital d was a dj from from the beginning yeah yes yes i was a hip hop dj this is back when like um run dmc Houdini, KRS One, I mean, like uh, all the greats, Rakim, mm -hmm. Big Daddy Kane, mm -hmm. Bismarcky, a lot, you know, um, a lot of them. So I was into that movement at the time, um, and around the '90s or late '80s, reggae dancehall was infiltrating inside the. It was, you know, you would start hearing it amongst hip hop DJs or on the radio stations, mm -hmm. in the hip hop radio stations. Oh, and all right. 
it was artists like Shinehead, Supercat, you know, um, Shaba. All of them, man, at that time, and it was infiltrating, and it was, I don't know what it was. It was just, it was, it was, it, 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 it grabbed me and to the point where I just, I started following that mm-hmm. and doing a little less of hip hop. So my, my gravitates to, to the reggae and I and me never looked back ever since. All right. So in the late 80s to the early 90s, reggae yeah. kind of stepping in, in America where the likes of you yourself begin to, you know, gravitate, you know, to it and you never look back again. How, how was the movement life for reggae in those days in terms of you um, trying to sway away from your, your hip hop and all that and going into reggae? How was that movement like? Well, I mean, it was where I was living at at the time of hip hop was a different area. Um, I was living in Connecticut, but I was living in a different city. Mm-hmm. And reggae was not big in that city. Um, to be exact, this, the, the, the name of the city is called Middletown. Mm-hmm. So it was all like, it was, it was predominantly American, um, you know, like really not, no West Indians mm-hmm. until I moved up into Hartford. And Hartford is 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 predominantly West Indian. I mean, right now where I'm 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 talking to you live from Hartford, Connecticut, and where I'm in the center of it. It's just all Jamaicans and all type of West Indian people around here. I mean, most of the dances and on, 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 on events local on the stage shows, they're right down the road from me. Wow. So it wasn't until I, I moved to Hartford that it, I was surrounded by it. And it was something I was already starting to fall in love with. And then I started going to, you know, like one and two, you know, little dances and everything. And and, and I'm a book up on a, on a, on a promoter and, and well, <laughs> yeah, man. So it just, it, it go from, from, from there. All it right. wasn't until it really we reached Hartford, Connecticut, where everything really start on the reggae, on the reggae side. All right. So, um, did you go into the artistic side or, you know, you were a hip hop DJ who, then studying and then in late 80s to 90s reggae dancer stepping and all that did you carry your 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 djing stuff over there into reggae or it was more of the artistic you know side all right so when i lived in middletown mm-hmm. I, um i used to we used to part with a bunch of people so i it was me and this next youth named slim that we used to DJ. We were like, you know, we had a little crew. I mean, it was, it was like high school days. And we had a crew and he was a DJ. I was a DJ. I mean, I talked to, with turntables. Mm-hmm. And, but at the same time, we had about four or five other people that used to rap. And I used to rap too. Mm-hmm. So I get, I get that already that, that, that kind of like, the, I was learning the craft from hip hop days from rapping. And then now when I came into Hartford now, I, I, I transformed from the, from, from, from hip hop to reggae. And now, I did do the the the, the DJ thing because I have my own sound, not my own sound system, but I do voice dub plates. Okay. So I still I still love that that side of it. You know what I mean? So so yeah, me, me, me still carry it on over to this side because when artists um them forward over to my studio and everything, my voice dub plates with them and everything, and you know them always say, "Yeah, you know want some song?" And yeah, man, you know. All right. So so around that time, you said you had your own sound. Um. Are you, t- are you talking about a sound system that you joined, that you were part of it, or you just love a sound system and you decide to be um, Capital D, the artist? This is my sound where I'm going to yeah, voice no, all my I, I, I decided to be Capital D, the artist. Okay. But I, as, as a side thing, I have my, my sound thing. I don't play out yet because I'm looking for some selectors, some young selectors. But but my, I have my sound now. It's called Caliente Sound, where I'm loaded. Where I have a lot all type of dubs, you know? But um, but it's really the, the Capital D or Capa Caliente, the artist, is really where my focus is on. That's really my, you know, 95, not, it's my 100% focus is on, is the artist, not really the sound thing. The sound thing is fun to me. Okay. All right. So now, stepping into your bio or reading or researching about you, I realize that you've played a lot of shows in, 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 in Jamaica and all that, you know, and I am looking at it like, how, how did this happen for Capital D, you know, how did that happen in terms of you now going to Jamaica to play the likes of, you know, um, Reggae Sound Splash, you know, yeah. plays, you know, Rebel Salute, you know, playing on Sting and so, all that? Yeah, so um, in the early 2000s now, the person that is currently managing Dwayne Stevenson, the reggae singer mm-hmm. from Jamaica, 
mm-hmm. was my former manager at the time. Mm-hmm. He saw me here in Connecticut and he, he saw something that he kind of like, yo, Moa, manage that youth. Mm-hmm. And we're talking everything. I, I, I will come like really good friends mm-hmm. to him decide to, to carry me to Jamaica and live amongst his family in Portmore. Mm-hmm. So there was times I would go to Jamaica and I would be there for like six months. Um, one time I was down there for like living for like a year straight and I was living amongst Dean Fraser, the legendary saxophonist. Mm-hmm. So I've spent a lot of time going um, back and forth to Jamaica. I mean, I, I, I spent like a lot, a lot of time. So and I visited all the studios. And when you're amongst Dean now, Dean wakes you up early in the morning and say, yeah, come, we go, we go to studio. And Dean is a man like how you would have artists that's going to go to studios to voice dub plates. Or, or 45, Dean has to go and play horns on people's songs, mm-hmm. art, other artists' songs or producers. You know, so I'm going to go with him. I'm going to go to Gregory Isaac studio. I'm going to go to Bujo studio with him. I'm going to go to Tough Gong studio with him. I'm going to go to Anchor. I'm going to go everywhere. The, um, Fattest Morel Exterminator. I'm going to go everywhere with Dean. And what Dean re- didn't realize, that I was soaking up everything like a sponge. I was just learning and learning and learning and learning and learning without even realizing it. Mm-hmm. And and at the same time, Dean also would give me rhythms to put, you know, to and say, yo, I want you pun, I want your voice on this rhythm, and we're gonna check this producer and and such, you know, and 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 I was just it, I was soaking it up in Jamaica, I was loving it. Wow. So so um, how did you end up on all these, you know, shows in terms of the reggae sound splash? The yeah. So Rebel if it wasn't Salute Dean, if it was either Dean Fraser or my former manager. Plus, I had people in, in in Jamaica that I was rolling with, like a person named DC from Changes International. They would get me on these shows, and and um, like for example, one time I was doing a show. Uh, Luciano carried me on a lot of shows. Also, Luciano was pretty much the first big international reggae artist to really embrace me, and he took me on a lot of shows. I mean, I, I did like Rebel Salute with him. I did um, Morgan Heritage, um, St. Thomas East Fest. Mm-hmm. I did a lot of shows with Lucy, and like to the point where, like for example, even East Fest, mm-hmm. I did it with with Lucy. But now Morgan Heritage said, "You know what? You're bad. I bring you forth next year, but by yourself." So then I, you know, I, w- I was getting now. I, I I didn't have to necessarily rely so much on Lucy. I could. I was just doing my own thing now too, you know. And Lucy, but like I said, Lucy was the first big artist really for embrace me. And even in the U.S., he he carried me on the on the on the Northeast tour with him. And on, so we we'll give thanks for Luciano for for being one of the first artists for like really embrace and and say, yo, do your thing, you. All right. So, in terms of performing in Jamaica now and all that, how was the response like? Because <laughs> I I know that Jamaican fans are hard to please. Yeah. So, here, all right, here, listen to this joke now. Yeah. I realized the hard way mm-hmm. that what you can get, all right, me as an entertainer, remember, I, I'm from Connecticut. So, and this is no disrespect to Connecticut, but I think they'll understand what I'm saying. Yeah. What I might can get away with in Connecticut at mm-hmm. that time, yeah. you can't get away with in Jamaica. It's a different set of people. It's a different culture, different, it's a different beast. Mm-hmm. So, when I went to Jamaica, the only bad thing that about the time that I went to Jamaica, I didn't have any songs on the road where people really knew knew me for. All right. So I was going up there and they were listening to songs that they they just did not know. They did not know the artist. And so I remember performing my my, my very first time on Sting mm-hmm. in Jamaica. And it's the same Sting when when Ninja Man and Cartel had that altercation. Oh, I see. Yeah, so I perform on I, I perform on that one. That was my very first Sting. Wow. Um so I performed way before that. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have any songs. I didn't have a good reception. But um, the next year, I'm going to come on, m- m- forward on the show again, and I had a much better reception. Because um, I remember listening to Ninja Man at Leng's office, and he said, listen, when you don't have a song where everybody knows you for, mm-hmm. you sing either like maybe a weed song or a song where, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, talk about the politics in Jamaica or in, in across the world. Anyway, it doesn't necessarily have to be about Jamaica or mm-hmm. somewhere that, that you feel there's a there's an injustice mm-hmm. when it comes to politics, you know, or or you can even say some Badman lyrics. And and the, once the people, you know, you, you go up there and, and you kind of read, you have to read the crowd, too. Mm-hmm. So if you don't if you don't get a forward in the first couple seconds, mm-hmm. it's just best you come off. You have to read the crowd. Yeah. So now if 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 them if them if they accept you, 
you're gonna you're gonna feel the reaction from the crowd and you're gonna you know they're giving you a forward or whatever yeah. so you can stay and do your thing and then you just have to know when to come off as a young artist you know because the the, the best thing is established artists they have songs that are on the radio and that, that everybody knows so it's much much i don't want to say it's much easier because you still have to put in work of course but 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 it, it is an easy it's a little bit easier you know for artists where when you have songs on the road that are more established and popular you know what i mean everybody knows the song where they can sing you know word for word or whatever you know mm -hmm. all right so so your, your your first time on sting you didn't get attention you needed but the second one was a bit was much appealing right yeah man nice all right a force a force thing to do i did i did two in jamaica i did one in miami and I did one in Connecticut. They brought it in Connecticut also. All right. All right. The first right. thing. Easy. Ladies and gentlemen, we're live on Asasi Radio 99.5 in Accra, 98.5 in Ashanti region, Kumasi. Cape Coast is 100.3. Yeah, man. And the Northern region, 99.7. Respect to all our listeners across the country and also all those listening online and via facebook all those on facebook please share the link we have Capa caliente all the way from america on the line with us Easy. yeah man and we yes talk, man we, we're talking about his career in terms of what he's been doing from those days till now you understand me so um i would like to know from you those days in America when reggae dancer setting that sound systems had the live artists and all that and all that. W did you partake in any of them? As a fan, not as a, not as an entertainer. Okay. As a fan, I've been to I've been to events here in Connecticut where um like Kilimanjaro would perform and they mm -hmm. would clash maybe a Hartford sound, and um Jaro would bring people like Early B, mm -hmm. Boro Bantan. Mm -hmm. Warren's man and, mm -hmm. and Hammermouth and, 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 and artists like that. So I've seen it live. Not as much as if I was in Jamaica, but I have seen it live. But as an artist, as a Capital D, no, because at that time I was still new and I was like, I, it's like I was going to school. So oh, I was yeah. still learning and every, everything. Even though I was a very young artist, but I, I, was, I did not participate in that type of, that type of, that, that era. All right. So in terms of doublet cutting now, mm -hmm. as Capital D, you know, the artist, which sound system did you first ever voice a doublet for? Wow. Easy. <laughs> probably, probably some Hartford sound. Honestly, probably like uh, most, most every Hartford sound have me on dub. Not all, but probably Hartford sounds. Hartford, because Connecticut, especially Hartford, was the first place to embrace me as an artist. Um, and it was here where I did my first reggae show. And if it wasn't for that show, um, the, the reception I got from the crowd, I mm -hmm. probably wouldn't be here talking to you right now about this. Mm -hmm. So the, most, 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 um, yeah, so most, most Hartford sounds, them voiced me back in the days like crazy. It's funny listening to some of the dubs because I sound completely different. Okay. And you can see the growth. Yeah. You know, but, but I mean, as far as big sounds now. Boy, well, when we go to Jamaica, my voice for like some some stone love and everything. My voice for a lot. Li listen to this. I voice for a lot of big sounds before, mm -hmm. um, but some of them never really played the dub. Mm -hmm. And but I'm noticing now they are playing the dubs. Mm -hmm. But I can't. I I don't blame them for that. I understand it because probably at the time when I was voicing these dubs back then, I probably didn't sound as ready as I am now. So I don't blame them for that because everybody has a reason, you know what I mean? And sometimes Definitely. people just like to sit on stuff, you know what I mean? Until you blow up or whatever, Definitely. or until you start making moves. All right. So, so I'm going to blame them. All right. So let me say this. I got to know about Capital D through my good friend from the UK, that is Baby Boom. He sent me um, a rhythm project and I listened to it and immediately I played Capital D. I'm like, who this? Which artist is this? I had to pull it back and play it again. So I did some videos and I sent to him. And he was like, yo, Lagazi, Capital D is not a UK artist. You know, because in my introduction and all that kind of thing, I did mention of UK and all that. He said, no, Capital D is not from UK, but it, it will be good for you to link him as a selector and then know him proper. And I'm like, all right. Then boom, the link was set. And me and 
you know, capitalist star link up and all that kind of thing. Send yeah. me some songs. I just, I, 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 around that time, I wasn't on a sassy radio. I was on a different platform. But right. fast forward now. Then one time also, um, I used to, because I love sound system so much, anywhere that I, I, I know that there is a program concerning sound system culture, I try my possible best to join and listen to what is going on. And then boom, I step on War Report with Jawil and also Sealan Brando. And these people then began to play Capital D, Dub Plate, and we say, Easy. Yeah. And then yeah, man. the whole thing intensified when um, War Report had that altercation with Rumble Talk. That was when, you know, it, it, it was like a competition. This one says, yo, you can't play Capital D more than me. And this one, that one, that one. And it was in. So I, I sat back and I'm like, wow. All right. I need to make sure I get this Capital D song in my dub box. <laughs> and it wasn't easy. So yeah. I got to know about Capital D from that and also with the I dub plate works and all that kind of thing from yeah. that. Could you... Tell us on authority that war report is part of the people that who really popularize your doublet, you know, cutting. I would say I, I I don't disagree with you, but I would say that more for the UK side. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that what I was doing at the time, because it, believe it or not, I mean, I was actually voicing for other UK people before War Report, but mm -hmm. because War Report really pushes their thing, especially with Facebook Live, mm -hmm. a lot of people gravitated to that. And mm -hmm. their show was predominantly about sound system culture. Mm -hmm. And a Wolipa sound man listened to that show. Okay. So of course, sound people, sound, sound system owners or selectors will contact me because of what they heard on War Report. But I was voicing for people like, like um, Big John New Thousand, he plays on the radio. On bullet movements. I was voicing for a lot of them before War Report. But like I said, because War Report, their platform is predominantly about sound system culture. They say, all right, make a movie or so. Because we love the sound thing, we love the dub plates. And 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 I like their energy. And 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 you know, they didn't have to play anything. They were just but they were playing everything like, you know, like just <laughs> They were playing them. Mm -hmm. They weren't holding back. And, mm -hmm. and we give thanks to War Report for that, Brando and Ja Will. So, yeah, I mean, but um, this is the thing about the UK. Mm -hmm. I live in Connecticut, mm -hmm. but as an artist, you Af it's just like you. You're, you're in Africa, but yeah. you try and push your thing in different areas. Definitely. So with the UK, I was trying to do something different instead of saying so much Connecticut. And I was already in Jamaica and I knew people in Jamaica knew, knew me. Mm -hmm. I was trying to attack different areas, different countries. Mm -hmm. You understand? So now I said, all right, let me do UK. You know, like, for example, I, I, I'm working with Soul Stereo in Paris. So I know they have my thing locked over in France. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I, 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 and I'm, now I'm working my way towards Germany and some other place. And, and, and I'm, I'm in the process of linking up with some Japanese sounds. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have to kind of like um, push your thing outside of where you live because you can't just focus on one on, on one set like for example now now you're gonna hear a lot more capital d in africa definitely. because now i'm working with lagazi definitely so you you know what i mean so you have to just kind of push 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 down the gate and, and, and so other people can hear you because the world is big and, he, and but but at the same time you have the internet now so it makes it a little bit easier not easier but it makes it a little bit easier so for example like i said so in in, in africa now we have lagazi you know, mm -hmm. and 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 so we, we are trying to push the thing in different areas. So in the UK, that's it. You know, that's we were pushing it with with War Report and and like I said before, War Report, Big John, New Thousand, Bullet Movements. You know, and even even Bullet, all right, even Bullet Movements, make my voice a song with um, Foundation singer Dennis Walks, who wow. sang Drifter. You know, a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. So uh, other people in in the UK were like very, you know, um. Them, 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 them helped my career too, you know. So Definitely. we give thanks for the UK. Definitely. All right. Hey. 40 minutes going into the hour. Two. And exactly 3 p.m. will be out of here. That the time is kind of running like, yo. Hey, <laughs> yo, man. I saw it go, man. <laughs> I just don't know. The time is just running. Let's step into A to Z now with um, the project with Lion Dog. Um, yeah. How come the, you entitled the album A to Z? And if you, if you look into this album... 
It look like you you specifically and and intentionally did it for the sound system culture world because all the the songs on it, you know, if 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 you are familiar with sound system culture, you know that oh, this is forty five. You can even play it at sound clash and all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. You tell us about A to Z. Why A to right. Z? Yeah, A to Z. Now, the whole concept of the A to Z, the song, it came from a dub play. Mm -hmm. There's a sound, a big sound here in the U.S. and in Jamaica called Emperor. Mm -hmm. An Emperor voiced the dub with me, and like midway through the through the dub play, mm -hmm. I started doing this A to Z. Mm -hmm. First time ever. Mm -hmm. And they played that dub alongside King Addy's mm -hmm. in, in Connecticut. And then, like, when the audio came out, I was getting a lot of calls from Soundman saying, yo, that A to Z, because the way that the way Emperor, the you, Nas Supreme, mm -hmm. intro the song, he made it sound like it was a different song when it was actually the same dub play, but yeah. it was down deep in a, another song. Yeah. But he made it the way he intro it, he said, yo, this, this, uh, I got, I got, I just got attack, Wally Pass sound, yeah. A to Z. And then I started going into this A to Z and I started getting phone calls about, yo, I want that dub, I want that dub. So now at that time, we're in the process with Lion Dub making the album. And I said, all right, we're going to do a, these sound system songs, but we're going to also do a song called A to Z because I'm getting a lot of qu requests for it. So like we do, we, we have, we're making sure that we leave one rhythm aside for A to Z. And then because of the of the A to Z popularity, when it did come out um, from the dub plates, we decided to name the album A to Z, you know? Yeah, so, and at the same time, I wasn't around as an artist in the time when the duck rhythm, the sick rhythm, slang tang rhythm, I, when, when all these rhythms were really released in the 80s and 90s, I wasn't established as an artist like I am now. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to have something that people can still have that, 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 that gravitates from that era. So it'll be like a classic thing. So people still can play me amongst those the, the greats like Super Cats and 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 Tenor Saws and you know Nitty Gritties and yeah man. So it it, it was a great project. A uh, big up Lion Dub because he's a he's another youth and believe in me and 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 Lion Dub is a great great producer, a perfectionist, and I believe it or not, I've been doing this a long time and this is my actually my first album ever. I've recorded crazy singles, great mm -hmm. uh, all of combinations with artists and everything, collaborations. But um, it was, this is my first album, and I said let's 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 do a sound system, a sound system album. And, and then I got like endorsements by like Ricky Trooper and Puma from LP, King Addis, Kingpin, all of them, um, um, Panther, Soul Stereo, all of them, man. And and they gave me drops for the album, and it's a great look. The album is doing great. Wow. And and looking into that, I'm like. Wow, I was going to ask about you know the the endorsement where the sound systems were were like yo you know doing the intro for the iron order, but I didn't hear from any African sound system. I don't know maybe if there is a reason for that. Because <laughs> A to Z is gonna have a it's gonna have a maybe a, a part three or part four. <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. Hey, yeah, yeah, one. Definitely. As a matter of fact, Lagazi, like you're lu you're lucky. You're lucky in an A to Z, man. Never call out Lagazi in a L. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Ladies and gentlemen, reason with um, Capital D. Trust me, it's 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 all fun over here, and we're going into the album um, with Lion Dub A to Z. And trust me, this album, 18 tracks on the album. If if you don't, if if you haven't heard it, please make yeah. sure it's. It, it's probably like about fourteen tracks, mm -hmm. but plus because it has the drops from the from the from the selectors like Trooper and everybody, mm -hmm. it comes out to about eighteen or or or, or something like that. But yeah. it's actually about maybe fourteen or fifteen tracks. Okay, all right. So yeah. you go online and type his name, Capital D. You understand yeah. me? And then add Capital D and Lion Dub A to Z, and trust yeah. me, you will see it. It's on all digital platforms. Yeah, or if you want to make it even easier, like I see, mm -hmm. anybody going on a computer, if they go on Google or whatever, or Chrome, whatever your search engine is, just type in Capital D Reggae. And and my 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 social medias will come out and, and the, probably the albums, everything, and, and songs and everything. And same thing, with, um, even if you go on YouTube, if you just put in Capital D Reggae, you'll see some things up there. All right. All right. Easy. Are we... 
are we going to see some maybe music videos from this particular album? Yeah, we're in the we're in the process of actually uh, doing doing some videos already. Yeah, man, we're in the process now. Yeah. All right, all right. Asasi Radio. This is Asasi Radio, the voice of our land, and online is Capital D. Let's talk about um, this in connection with the 420 day. That is higher influence, cap yeah. capo caliente and jazzy. Tea. Yeah. Tell us about yeah, this man. song, yeah. Well, jazzy T from Renaissance. Great selector, great um, you know, sound system personality, celebrity. Um, I know him a long time. I know him from Jamaica mm -hmm. through my friend DC from Changes. And um, believe it or not, Jazzy T has a brother that's also a producer named DJ Kareem. I used to voice for him before Jazzy in Jamaica. So, you know, his, his brother, big up Kareem, his brother, you know, used to voice me and everything. So now Jazzy now in link me and say, Yo, are you in time now? And you know? I have a rhythm. And him sent like three rhythms on. And the rhythm that I chose that I like was the high was the high influence rhythm. Mm -hmm. And and me listen it in something about the sometimes a rhythm will give me the inspiration of what type of song mm -hmm. it should be. And the rhythm to me gave me a a a, a, a like a herbs vibes, mm -hmm. you know, weed vibes. But I wanted to do something a little bit different for like because there's a million weed songs. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try and do a song where everybody can relate to it, even non-smokers. Mm -hmm. And the, the the song actually, the inspiration really, other, other than the rhythm, was I was in a sound clash in New York. This is the first time I'm talking about this now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was in a sound clash in New York, mm -hmm. me and Emperor. And mm -hmm. we was listen, we was at a sound clash listening to some, and I was hanging next to Puma. All right. LP. We are, we are part. Yeah. I'm Puma, we don't want to put his... Thing out there like I'm not but I'm blast but Puma blaze up heavy yeah man and 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 not the normal normal I saw yeah. certain that when him light up the whole play twenty <laughs> people thirty people could be lighting up but when Puma light up you just Easy. yeah so I catch myself like in other clash I'm gonna say yo I catch a contact I wasn't I wasn't blazing mm -hmm. so we get that inspiration from high influence from that actually that I think I did the song probably the, the following weekend I get I, because I was thinking about it I was like yo this this makes sense is this this is like yeah what happened at the clash and so I, I get the inspiration from hanging around Puma LP when when he was blazing up and I was like yo I mean, really I catch a contact <laughs> <laughs> I saw Syria, yo. so so it's out right yeah man yeah man it was it was released um this month on uh, April 7th it's it's out the video is out a lyric video is out. Yeah, man, it's out. Definitely out. Yeah, man. High influence. Um, produced by it's it's Capa Caliente, which is same Capital D. Mm -hmm. But the thing, the reason why we we did this Capa Caliente is Jazzy wanted to try and reinvent Capital D. So okay. sometimes as an artist, you have to take um advice and opinions because you don't want to be just one minded. You know what I mean? You you, you want to listen to your your peers amongst you, and you say, Yo, Cap, make we make we try and relaunch your thing. So. He said, let's do Kappa Caliente. We, we, we decided on a name. We right. said Kappa Caliente because it's still, Kappa is, is kind of like saying Capital D. Mm -hmm. And Caliente was always my phrase. Like how you would have killer, bounty killer, lot of mercy, or mm -hmm. bullet, bullet, bullet. But my thing was Caliente. So we still have the Caliente, Kappa Caliente. And, and then Jazzy T. And, and we'll put together a nice song, man. I influence, under the influence of second hand smoke. Got me thinking, should I take a one toe? Just one job. One drum make me feel like I was up inside a helicopter. Bad song, bad song, Lagazi. Yeah, man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, so go check that one out. Higher Influence, Capo Caliente, yeah, and also Jazzy T. Big yeah. one over there. Um, Capital D, do, do you have any um mind in terms of coming to Africa or to, to go to any African country or come to Africa, you know, for, for a show? I, I would love to. I would love, I would love to, but you see, Africa. I hear so many beautiful things about Africa. That if I, the day that I forward, I have to bring my family, my wife and my daughter. I have to bring them because I, there's certain places I can travel alone. But if I go to Africa, I have to bring the family Definitely. because I, I hear so much beautiful things about Africa, and I see the reception some of these artists get. Regardless, I don't care about the reception because I, I think if even if I go as a as Capital D, Capital Caliente, the artist. 
That gonna be a tourist same way, you know. Me, I'm not gonna say we're gonna do some touring, you know, of some course. regular tourist thing, you know. Because <laughs> at the same time, I'm capital D, but I can stop being capital D any day I want. I'm, you know, I'm Miguel, you know. So sometimes I'm Miguel, mm-hmm. my government name. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm capital D, and you know what? Sometimes I want to go to Africa and enjoy myself and, and go see some things because, you know, I'm tired of this cold weather over here, you know, brother. Crazy. <laughs> Yeah, man. So, Africa, you know, all the countries listening to us right now on Assassin Radio, Capital D is open, you know. So, if 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 a man wants to link you up for maybe a show or anything in terms of what you're doing and all that, how can a man link you up? By which medium? Yeah, so, again, if you go on social media and you type in Capital D Reggae, you will see my social medias. Right. Okay. You can inbox me either on my Facebook or my Instagram. See it. Mm-hmm. And if you need to verify that it is me, you just we talk it out on the, you know in my inbox. And if I have to make a phone call or whatever, WhatsApp. Because now everybody can connect and talk. If you have to see it's really me, we'll, we'll do whatever my have to do and say, yeah, see. I mean, because you can see me. You see me, right, Laga? Of course, of course. See I'm me, seeing you live. Right. Right? Yeah, man. Right. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Crazy. So, so you will know it's really me. See? Definitely, yeah. definitely, yeah, yeah. definitely. So, Junior Maestro, all the way from Norway, is on the live on Facebook, and he's asking that um, like I say, ask him, how has the Latin American continent embraced him? Well, by the dub plate requests I get, I would say good, <laughs> but at, um, you have to remember in the Latin. All right. I, I've gotten great acceptance. And, and the reason I say that is because of the 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 the, the places I get dub requests from. Because I get a lot, I get a lot of dub plate requests from Colombia, Argentina, Portugal, Portugal, every a lot of places. So um we we give thanks. Some songs it seem like are gravitating more to that side than than maybe, for example, in Africa. Maybe in Africa there's a, a particular song that's getting more rotation. In Jamaica, there might be a particular song that's getting more rotation. But um, I, I, I've had great success over there, and 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 even though with the Latin, um, um, a Latin market or Hispanic Latino market, a lot of it nowadays is like reggaeton. Mm-hmm. But I've been doing this thing before reggaeton existed, you know. So that's why a lot of people say, "Well, why you not do reggaeton?" Because when I started, there was no reggaeton. It was it was people like um the closest thing to that was like people like. From Panama, El General, El General, Nando Boom. These were the big artists um, creating waves as as Spanish artists, reggae artists. But they were doing reggae, and this is way before reggae thong. So, so um, yeah, and we give thanks for them because kind of they they also them them you could have said them inspired me too, you know, because they they were they were put you know busted down the door at that time. Yeah, so big up those the Panamanian artists like Nando Boom and El General. Yeah man, because they, they were doing it and big them up same way. I think they're still they're still doing it. They're still touring and everything. All right. Easy. Ladies and gentlemen, trust me, it's 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 been lovely and it's been sweet dealing with Capital D on on the album A to Z. And trust me, yeah. it's it's available. I want you I want I want you to just Google his name and go out there and support the artists because this is what we do and this is what we represent. Easy. Yeah. And you know, Assassin Radio, the voice of our land, we are always in for the artists. This is the home for reggae dancer and sound system culture. And you know how the game is already. That when we step on the case, trust me, we cross every red light. Assassin Radio. Yeah, man. So, Capital D, in wrapping up, before we wrap up, what do you make of, you know, people saying that, you know, dancehall is violent? You know, there is a video even circulating on social media that a show that happened in um, Canada, I think. Yeah, fr- I saw it. Yeah, I saw Friday it. Disgusting. Night. Yeah. By, Disgusting. I don't know, like. I don't like it. You know. I, I don't like what I saw. But I mean, I really too too talk about that. But we see it. But no, I, mean, I don't like it because. As a, as a, no, I, mean, I don't like it. I, I saw it and hmm, I don't like it. But um, it yo that that's all. Music, w- the world in general is violent and right up. It's not really music, you know. I mean, yeah, people have to be responsible. You can listen. All right, for example, but like watch. 
when we watch movies, we like watch some gangster thing or or some crime movies and everything. And they're shooting and everything and every you know. And there's there's a, there's violence. There's violence in all type of different ways. There's war movies from history. History movies from back in the days. Because if you look at history, war was always happening. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't necessarily mean my must go pick up a gun or my must go shoot somebody or my must go rob something. I'm gonna leave that to the TV. But yeah, yeah, I have to be a responsible person. And, and I, I say a lot of it has to do with your upbringing, too. My parents never bring me up like that. Them love me a lot. So, to, to, to you know, to the point where and, and them teach me where this is right and this is wrong. And as you grow up, too, you learn. You also learn. Cause I'm a street smart enough. So you, 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 you learn in life of, of how to try and um, maintain yourself as a person. And, and then I, I, I'm a father. I have my, my, my children. So I have to be responsible for them, too, and, and show them, you know, be, you know, um, be a role model for them, but people in themselves they have to take it upon themselves for be yo you have to smart in this you know Definitely. you have to be smart you can't the world right now yo it's a crazy time you know because may I tell you the truth I, there's there's things going on in in the world now that I just don't remember them happening when I was like a teenager or yeah. young adult I, I, I'm seeing some crazy stuff going on in the world but such is life and we have to just kind of like move with the punches and roll with it and and, and 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 navigate ourselves to the positive and stay away from the negative. There's going to be both. But you have to just try and navigate yourself and, you know, surround yourself around good people. You know, because if you sur around, surround yourself around negative people, negative things are going to happen. Yeah, man. So you just surround yourself around good people, the right people. People will love you. You know, don't be selfish in life. Try, you know, if somebody help you along the way, you know, help another one. You don't have to help the same person. Help another one. Each one teach one. So, yeah, man, it's, you know, yeah, yeah, for just, just love, man. Love. It's all about love, brother. Love. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Life is short enough. Def Seriously. Seriously. Life is short. A blink, of, brother, a blink of an eye, you know. You, let me give you a joke before we wrap it up. On the, on the 10th, on the Easter Monday, 10th of April, me, myself, and Daddy Bosco spoke about Jashaka on this same platform. We spoke about him extensively and what he has done in Ghana and how he came, he came to Ghana in the late 80s to the 90s and what he has done and the land he has acquired in Ghana in the Bri and all that. We spoke about him the Monday, the 10th. And then on the 12th, I got the news in the afternoon that Jashaka has passed on. And I'm like... But wait, but wait, what is this? You know what I mean? So as you said, life is too short. Let us appreciate every moment. You yeah, understand man. me? And live by it. Capital D, before I leave you finally on the line, your words of advice to the people listening to you and then also your plans you have, you know, in the future line. I don't want to say in the pipeline because sometimes when you open the tap in Africa, it doesn't flow. So what do you have in the future line? And also your word of advice. Yeah, man. Well, um, my album, my album, like my other album out right now. If you haven't listened to it, go stream it, go check it out. A to Z, Capital D, A to Z. It's out available. My other song, the single with Jazzy, Jazzy T called High Influence. Go check it out. The 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 video is available. My other song about to release um May 5th with Upsetter Records called Barriers. I'm on the rhythm, Sizzler, Bugle, Wolipa Artist. Look out for that. Um Advice. My advice is for the young artists. Take a book out of out of take a page out of my book. If you're an artist, a, 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 a reggae artist, dance artist, whatever kind of if a hip hop artist, try save a little money, invest in yourself, invest in your craft. It's like if you're a, if you're a mechanic, you can't be a good mechanic if you don't have a wrench, hammer, tools where you need. So as an artist. Buy yourself a, a microphone. Buy whatever you can buy. You don't have to buy everything. We we un, we understand. We understand that that you can't get everything one time. Because even my studio, I didn't get everything one time. You just get piece by piece, and have your own stuff, so you don't have to necessarily rely on people. And it helps you. It it, it allows you to practice on your own time, on your own schedule, as much as you want. You know. And so yeah, I would say to all the young artists, um, be be humble. If um. Every small opportunity can have a big outcome. And, and just be be humble. And I love what you're doing because I'm not in, in this for, mo for money. I love it. Because if I was in it for money, I would have stopped a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, I have no mansion or nothing like that. 
I love this thing. So love what you do, regardless of what you do, whether it's music, whether it's fixing cars, whether it's helping the elderly, just love what you do, love life, um, surround yourself around positive people and blessings to everyone in the Africa. I hope to see the item live in a living. Zane, yeah, Africa. Man. <laughs> yes, man. Eight is head. Tell Africa, then somebody yabba dead. Africa never see us. How we them pray they yet. Bam. Hey, Laga Z. Yeah, man. So if you check on the um the, the, the Facebook Live on Assassin 995 page, Lagazi Sound International has gone to copy the A to Z link and you know um pasted it on the live. So if 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 you are there, it will be easy for you to just click on it and then support the artist. And we'd like to say big up to Lagazi Sound International and the whole crew, Benedict Jaffe's Bob Africa, Junior Maestro, and myself. Easy. Yeah, man, big up Lagazi. Lagazi, yeah, the whole family. Respect. Mad. Capital D, I would like sir. to say thank you so much for your time and space. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Say it until the next time. Africa, enough love and respect. Caliente, Easy. fuego. Africa, yes, man. Bam. Um.